What's up, everybody? My name is Mike Verivi. I am the founder of the Fox Valley Whiskey Society, and today I wanted to come to you guys and do one of those cheesy top five bourbons for whatever. And since Thanksgiving is quite literally just days away, I figured why don't we go ahead and do a top five for Thanksgiving. Now, these lists always seem to irritate me because they're always bourbons or whiskeys or whatever that are generally pretty unattainable. Whiskeys that you would go to the table with and most of the people in your family probably are not going to have any idea what it is. So I decided to go ahead and create my own list of things that I have on my shelf, and more importantly, things that you can find readily available at the liquor store. Things that most people in your family, or maybe if you're celebrating with just friends, are probably going to know what it is, because not everybody is a bourbon snob like you or I. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the list so we don't waste any time here. Obviously, the first one on the list of top five bourbons that you have to have for Thanksgiving, wild turkey. You almost can't go to Thanksgiving if you're a bourbon drinker and somebody's expecting you to bring a bottle without it. Whether it's wild turkey 101 or whether it's some sort of Russell's Reserve, whether it's a rye or a single barrel or something, you almost have to have something from wild turkey. Now, if you're anything like me, you don't drink bourbon throughout the meal. Generally speaking, I'm going to drink water, I'm going to drink soda, maybe I'll drink a glass of wine, but I usually reserve bourbon towards the end of the meal. So for something like Wild Turkey, especially Wild Turkey 101, since, since it is a high rye bourbon, I find that it goes really, really well with desserts, with, with things that are sweeter. It's that almost peppery bite pairs really, really well with something that's really sweet. So Wild Turkey 101 is a must. You can find it on the shelf for like 20 bucks pretty much anywhere you go. Next up, number two, bottles of bourbon that should be at your Thanksgiving table, Knob Creek. Now, Knob Creek is one of those that is pretty much everywhere. You really can't go anywhere without finding Knob Creek. Any reputable liquor store is going to have it. It usually sits on the shelf for around $30 to $40. This one in particular is a single barrel pick from Westport whiskey and wine in Louisville. Um, these are absolutely fantastic. Again, if you're anything like me, I don't drink bourbon throughout the entire meal. I wait for dessert. This one has a beautiful kind of roasted peanut note that I find in a lot of Knob Creek that I really, really enjoy. <clears throat> the caramel notes, the toffee notes, the vanilla notes really pop through and they really kind of amplify a dessert. Number three, bourbon for Thanksgiving. Old Forester 1920. This is my favorite of the Whiskey Row series. Some people prefer Old Forester 1910. I, in particular, like the higher proof. I love the cherry notes that pop through, the, um, the, the, the cherry pie, the stewed fruit notes. I really, really enjoy those. Um, it also has an absolutely fantastic history. If you are a bourbon nerd and somebody's sitting at the table and they want to kind of test your knowledge, Old Forester is a great one to kind of dive into. Um, generally you can find it on the shelf for around 50 to $60. It is a little bit of a splurge on Thanksgiving, but Hey, sometimes family's worth it. Number four on the list. Cause we're going to keep this rolling along because I know you guys got a lot to do makers 46. Now makers mark pretty much everybody knows. So if you come to the table with makers mark, generally they're going to think, Oh, I know that bourbon. I know the red wax. I've probably had it before, but this is a really good one. This is Makers 46. Um, this one comes in at 94 proof. This is just the stave profile. 46 is, is the stave profile. Um, it has a little bit more of a wood character to it. The fruit notes come through a little bit more. Being a weeded bourbon, it is a little bit softer, so it is something that's a little bit more approachable depending on who's at the table. This is something that if you're uncle who likes to talk about politics, or if your grandmother who doesn't really care for bourbon, this is something that they might like to try maybe in a cocktail. Maybe you mix them in old fashioned, or, you know, maybe you put it in some more, some other sort of, of holiday cocktail. And the last one, last but not least is one of my absolute favorites. And this is really, really something special that you can bring to the table on Thanksgiving. And that is four roses, single barrel. Now these are all going to be different depending on what variety you get. Um, whether it's OBSQ, OVS, o o -S -Q -R -U -E, whatever, it doesn't really matter. They're all going to be a little bit different. But what I love about Four Roses is that floral note that comes through on there, those fruit notes that come through. Those are really, really great for pairing with a Thanksgiving dessert, like bread pudding or pumpkin pie. Um, again, if you're anything like me, I generally don't drink bourbon 
throughout the entire meal because I'm getting a lot of sodium, a lot of salt, and eating a lot of food all at once. I need something to quench my thirst, and bourbon doesn't quench my thirst. I need water. I need soda. My uncle drinks milk. Um, you know, sometimes a glass of wine works. Generally, I'm, I'm drinking bourbon at dessert at the end of the meal or on the couch um, watching the football game afterwards. So <clears throat> that's my list, my top five. I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments below what your top five is for Thanksgiving and what bottle you guys are going to be bringing to the table this holiday season. Uh, everybody, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Um, drop your comments below. Don't forget to subscribe. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone.